Hi guys, so this is a video where me and Digi talk about Legend of Korra. I don't know if this is a trash talk, but let's just call it that. So dude, Legend of Korra, what do you think about it? First season? Yeah. Yeah, I guess since the second one hasn't come out yet. Yeah. Well, let's just so talk the about... the second one isn't as bad as the first. Yeah, the first season was... It wasn't terrible, it was okay. You know, it, but it had some pretty big flaws. What? Uh, yeah, they had a couple of flaws, but it might have just been because it was rushed. Yeah, uh, one, one complaint I kind of have with the show and with the fans is everyone keeps using, oh, it's only 12 episodes, so give it a break. That's kind of a stupid argument, if you ask me. Despite there only being 12 episodes, it's still a lot of work to do some stuff. And I gotta say, if you only had 12 episodes, who the fuck forced you to put four subplots into the main story? There are four subplots that go nowhere, and e they either go nowhere or they suck balls, especially uh, the romance one. Provide an example of one of them. Okay. Uh, the airbending training. Uh, oh, that was bullshit. Yeah, uh, it, it it's not too terrible. I mean, I can kind of buy her having a problem with airbending. Aang had a problem with fire and earth bending. My problem with her airbending training is she doesn't learn it. She just believes in the heart of the cards, and now she can magically airbend in the end. That was so annoying. Such lazy writing. Yeah, and even even if Aang did have a problem with firebending, he was still able to make fire and, you know, do a little firebending. She can do jack shit with air until the end. It makes no sense. It contradicts the old series. She cries and then suddenly she's a master of airbending. Oh no, her man whore was in jeopardy, so yeah, she had to save him. Yeah. But... That was such a bullshit excuse to help them out in the end. And the Avatar state. Oh yeah, uh, that's one of the reasons why I hate the original series is energy bending. Like, I mean, if you can show a murder-suicide in this show, why the hell can't you just make it so that Ozai gets buried under a mountain or Aang accidentally kills him? Or he's killed off-screen or something. Yeah, those could both work. Uh, I mean... People like to defend airbending because, not airbending, uh, what's it called? Energy? Hey, energy yeah, that, yeah, that deus ex machina bullshit. Uh, so they like to defend the deus ex machina bullshit by saying, Oh, well, you saw the lion turtle in the library, so that explains everything. Bullshit. We never once get a mention of a fifth art of en energy bending, or bending in general. There's always been four and never more. Yeah. And not and unless you're counting the sub bendings. Well, those are pretty much sub bending arts. It still kind of sucks that air doesn't have a sub type of bending. Yeah, maybe they'll work on it later, but you never know. Well, who knows? Aang did recover a lot of air bending artifacts. So, and he and he didn't learn every air bending move. Like the only reason he became a master was because he invented the air scooter. But uh, what I want to say he is, his training, did he? he was frozen for a hundred years. Well, yeah, but before he was frozen, he said, "I completed thirty six of the thirty seven uh, air bending techniques, but they made me a master because I invented a new one. And I really like Tenzin's uh, one where he makes like a big whirlwind of air around him and it kind of protects him and uses it for attacks. Yeah, that reminded me of his. Um, remember Aang's uh, when he went into the air bending scene? I mean, the Avatar scene. <laughs> Do that. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. But uh, another subplot that goes nowhere for me. And it kind of feels just there so that they can do something awesome with bending is pro-bending. The sport? Yeah, well, the sport itself is, is okay. It's, I think it's the, too soft for me. 
Yeah, I wish it was like the rock sport from the second book. I have no idea what that thing's called, but that was just awesome. Uh, I, I kind of get that, like, um, well, obviously they can't just let them go all out because I'm pretty sure they would all kill each other. Yeah, I guess. But, I mean, it's just stupid. Like, who the fuck cares if I can't shoot you over the side? Like, it should just be a ring. Six benders, one ring, who falls out, loses. Oh, so no, like, no other pull cut. You can't get knocked past. Yeah, and the rules are... That's kind of stupid. I don't understand the zones at all. That's unnecessary. Yeah. But uh, but I think the sport itself is okay. I just feel like it was there so that we can have a reason to introduce Bolin and Mako. Oh, yeah. That, that was a beginning for them, too. Yeah. I, uh, you know how everyone calls them street rats? Yeah. Like, why couldn't you just make it so that Korra... You know, meets them on the streets that they're like these guys that work for the Yakuza or the Triad or whatever they're called. <laughs> that could work. Yeah. The beginning wasn't so like sound, especially since Korra fell in love right at the start. Yeah, and that's the biggest problem with this show. It has one of the worst romances I have ever, ever seen in my life. I mean, it's it's worse than Twilight, but it's not as bad as Anakin and Padme from the prequels. But it's pretty up there among the worst romances of all time. Nice no, you're not a nice person, you child-killing psychopath. You are an evil person. For example, you choked your pregnant wife and you tried to kill her because she wouldn't suck your balls after you murdered all the Jedi. Wow, you're such a great person, Anakin. Yeah, so so amazing, so kind-hearted. Yeah. Well, now that we've pretty much tore Star Wars another new one, like it didn't need one, um, I think the romance could have worked if it was a little more subtle, but it was just forced down your goddamn throat. Like, the whole fifth episode, it's all romance. Everything. So sad. Wait, yeah. was that the episode where both yeah, <laughs> that was pretty funny. I laughed, but I felt so guilty afterwards. Yeah, I really feel sorry for the guy because I I don't like any of the guys. I don't think any of the guys are really for Korra, at least not yet. But I, I like Bolin. He actually tried to get to know her. Well, he Mako. Uh, I don't think anyone's like one hundred percent for her. Like I don't ship anyone except Zutara. I think that's one of the biggest problems of the se of the third season is there's no Zutara. But um, I don't think that any of the guys are really perfect for her, except maybe Bolin, because he's the only one who tried to actually get to know her. You know, like the small things couples should do. Yeah, she didn't let him know. She was too interested in Mako, who also lives. They never even have a fucking conversation the whole show. Like, maybe once when he tells her, uh, yeah, my origin is a ripoff of Batman in the third episode. <laughs> uh, that's the only th conversation they even have, and he doesn't even like her. I mean, he's. I've watched the episodes, like yesterday. And in the and before she tells him she's in love with him, he acts like a complete asshole towards her. He doesn't even show that he's romantically interested in her at all. Yeah, I guess it's just the girls fighting for the bad boys type of Yeah, and that really annoys me. Like we already have enough girls thinking life is a big chick flick. We don't need a TV show telling them that life is another big chick flick. I mean, am I wrong? Well, to be fair, this show really was intended for one season, and they probably thought, maybe we should do this. But I mean, then why don't you just throw one of the other subplots out? Like, if you threw Pro Bending out, you could have had almost the entire first part of the season free. Yeah, you would have had, you would have had like, I don't know, half of the entire show. 
Yeah, and the whole fifth episode could have been free. Well, most of the fifth episode. But uh, the next subplot that that's kind of interesting, but it doesn't go anywhere, is the Tarlock subplot. Like, I mean, I mean, you could have made Tarlock is kind of the Amon of the Benders, and you really could have made him a big villain, except he shows up in like how many episodes before he loses his bending? Like two. Yeah. He's actually yeah. actually probably in like half of it, maybe for like a couple minutes. Yeah, and if you threw out pro bending in the romance, you really could have had a subplot that actually adds to the show because you could have had no man's land in the Avatar world. Like, uh, you don't read comic books, so I gotta explain that to you. Basically, there was like this storyline where Gotham got cut off from the outside world, and it was called No Man's Land, and basically the whole city was divided up into these gangs. So I think they could have done something like that, where you got Tarlock's side, you got Amon's side, and then you just got Korra, who's kind of in the middle of everything. Yeah, and I think the whole second season should not... The second part of the first season should have been like that. I think that would have been cool. And that's kind of my problem. We don't actually see Amon do anything bad to Benders. Yeah, we don't see him like breaking into people's homes, throwing them out on the streets. Of course, they're not going to show that on a show, but... <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty funny. It was funny in The Dark Knight Rises where they just threw old people out, out of the windows and out of the streets. That was awesome. But uh, what do you think about Korra herself as a character? They didn't really establish the fact that Korra did they? Just show her as a kid being picked up as an avatar and then jump like, what, 10 years later? The 15, not 15, 13, 12 or something episode not years but my problem with Cora is she should have been more socially retarded <laughs> you know like eh, more awkward with people like I don't know how to deal with people I or like Aang but he wasn't like that all that much well Aang actually had a home like the temple was his home and that was normal to him, and he did actually have a lot of humor. So. But yeah, it was his home. Yeah, I d I kind of wish he was a little more socially retarded, like Captain America in the modern day. You know those jokes where he's like, "What is this thing you call an iPhone?" I wish there were more jokes like that where she's like, "What is this thing?" Like she doesn't even know what money is until she reaches Republic City. And I think she should have been a little more socially retarded because she's in like other avatars. Every avatar goes across the world. He meets people. He has to convince people to be his trainer and stuff. Korra really got served everything on a platter. She basically was born with a silver spoon up her ass. Probably because she was too good. Too good of a bender, that is. Oh, and Aang's a complete dumbass. Uh, the promise proves that he's a complete dumbass, but this show also proves that he's a complete retard. I mean, he basically tells the White Lotus, take care of the Avatar. Really, Aang, you didn't think that they maybe could keep her locked up in a secret base at the South Pole all her life and treat her like a fucking prisoner in her own home? Did that never cross your mind, oh wise Avatar Aang? Hmm. But... Uh, I like her personality a lot more than Aang. I absolutely despise Aang after yeah, the promise. Uh, I really like that she's feisty, that she really loves being the Avatar. Yeah, I don't I like Aang. Yeah. I, I, I don't think she... I think Aang would be a better Avatar than her because Korra really doesn't have that, you know, feminine touch, you know, to deal with political situations and stuff. And she's kind of like a five-year-old. She, like, has to be taken care of. She doesn't know what money is. Stuff. Yeah. You know, but what, one of the other subplots was... What was his name? He has uh, a voice of Zuka. I forget his name. Uh, Iroh. General Iroh. Yeah. I thought he was pretty cool. 
I think so too. And the whole big battle in the season finale was really boring. I, I don't know what else to say about the battle. It was just boring, and that's it. Like, the promos all showed he it like it was... He didn't have that many moments, did he? I... He... Well, his moments are... Uh, I got blown up, so now I have a scar on my arm. Like my grandfather. Ha ha ha, wink, quick, nod, nod, fuck you. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much it. I mean, he was pretty awesome when he took out the Jets. Like, he just used firebending to, you know, soar through the air. Yeah, that was badass. Yeah. I mean, what we saw of him was pretty cool, but I don't. But I just feel like he was there just so we can say, well, Zuko had a grandson who's a general. And a pretty bad general if he can be beaten that easily. Uh, but the character I, I really thought. Hope in season yeah. Two they'll elaborate more on, like, backstories. Yeah, that's a big problem I have with the show. Actually, that's a big problem I have with the Promise comic book, because the Promise comic book. It has like 50 fucking subplots running at the same time. And and it thinks that it has to answer everything. Like where did the air acolytes come from? You know how they where they came from? Where? Basically, Aang had uh this group of fangirls who dressed up as air nomads in this city and that's how the air acolytes were created. That's it? That's pretty much it. Wow. And uh, you know how the metal benders were created? It's even better. Basically you, ha basically, you have Toph's school of metal bending. So far, so good. Then you have three stereotypes that made me want to commit suicide. You got the fat guy who's completely worthless. He's like Poe, except he has none of Poe's charm. Uh, and he says doom all the time. Literally every fucking piece of his dialogue is doom this, doom that. I mean, it, Dr. Doom is probably his favorite comic book character because he constantly says doom and I just wanted to kill him. Then you have this stupid stuck-up five-year-old who loves shoes and wants to bang Sokka. I'm serious. And then you got the emo guy. He's the only guy I like and you know why he's emo? Because he has the worst name of all time. Like, that's it. He hates life because his parents gave him, like, the worst name ever. And I <laughs> thought that was just funny. Oh, God. Uh, you keep talking. I'm going to try and find it. It's really awesome. Uh, you know, s tell me something about how horrible Mago is as a character and stuff. Uh, I don't even want to get into that. He's so terrible. <laughs> his, his entire storyline was so utter shit. <laughs> Yes, but why? Well, to begin with, let's start with his introduction, where, you know, he gave her the cold shoulder all the time, yet she, with no reason at all, fell in love with him. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'd be probably annoying talking about that, but that's just really, really horrible. They forced it so badly, it's like they didn't just give, they just didn't give a shit. I was I used to be okay with Katana Aang, you know, before the promise proved that it's complete bullshit. I mean, the promise pretty much ruined Avatar for me. Not completely, but a lot. Oh yeah, I found his name. Uh Muche Guche La Puche the <laughs> Third. That is his name. Wow, I would hate I would hate life too if I had a name like that. Oh god, look at his reaction. By uttering that name, you've lodged a splinter in my soul. <laughs> that is so awesome. Uh, Toph is awesome. I love her. I love when she tortures people. That's just so funny. Especially Sokka, with the blind jokes. I didn't know she opened a school for metal benders. Didn't think she would teach that skill to anyone besides, like, police department and shit. Yeah. I never really thought Toph would be a good teacher. I mean, we did see her teach Aang, but that was like she for one episode. Well, she's Toph. 
I've actually wanted Toph to be with Aang because Aang has no fucking backbone whatsoever and Katara supports his indecisiveness and the promise I really hate that comic book I <laughs> really do it's really horrible but uh, the promise he's like um, oh I want to destroy this city now I want to save it now I want to destroy it now I want to bang this chick but now I don't want to bang this chick and she basically tells him it's alright Aang you're the avatar whatever choice you make it's alright no it's not if you had just killed Ozai, Zuko wouldn't be trying to, you know, start another war. And who the fuck's fault is that? Yours, you bald dumbass. That's like me saying, I broke Hitler's arms. Now he stopped. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's stupid. <laughs> it doesn't work. It's horrible. He still has legs. <laughs> And he's still alive, you know, the reason why everyone loves him. I mean, Ozai is the Hitler of this universe. The whole third season just proves that. You got statues and pictures of him all over the place. I mean, in the school, they're basically giving an oath to Ozai, telling him how much they love him and shit. Yeah, they're forced to do that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, what else to say about the show? Amon got completely fucked in the ass. I mean, I feel like I want to say he wasn't given enough justice. Not like in terms of getting his ass kicked, but like his character development and other crap. I mean, he's no Loki from the Avengers. He did not become everybody's bitch by the end of the season. I mean, he pretty much beat everybody. He, I don't think he ever really lost a genuine fight. I don't count the Korra believing in the heart of the cards and now shooting air out of her snatch as a win. I thought his death was kind of like... I kind of liked it. It was emotional how Tarlik was able to do that. That was a reference to Godfather Part 2. You know, where um, in the end of Godfather Part 2, he um, blows up the boat with like this traitor to the family, and that's kind of what Amon was to his family, in a way. I thought it was kind of well, poetic. Was kind of, yeah, kind of, yeah. But how did how did Tarlock know that that was his brother? Uh, didn't he say it was something he did earlier by his bending or something? He knew how it felt. He, okay. Yeah, I really don't like that he's a bender. It just it really makes him from a cool villain to a guy who ha who's pissed off at his dead dad, and I'm gonna make everyone die because of that. I'm sorry, but be so much better. I'm sorry, but uh, just because you're pissed off doesn't mean you get to do whatever you want. That's like if I stub my toe and I go blow up a hospital. That's that's just that's just not justified. Although that would be pretty funny. I don't know why I'm a morbid bastard. I guess I love that stuff. Yes, but. I, I really love the voice actor for Amon. He does a lot of anime. Like, I mean, he's done more than anime. He, like, voiced Vilgax in Ben 10. I think he voiced someone in Young Justice, too. I think he voices um, Vandal Savage or Lex Luthor. I'm not sure. But, yeah, he's in pretty much everything. Too bad he never watches any of his shows. I don't get that. Well, Hugo Weaving, you know, bitched about Transformers a few days ago. You know, how about how awful his job experience is. Uh -huh. Yes, how horrible. You sit in a booth for an hour and a half, and then you get paid $50 million. Your life really sucks, Hugo Weaving. So sad. Yeah, it is. I can't believe I actually agreed with Michael Bay on that one. That really is just a stupid, stupid argument, especially today where people can't even find a fucking job. And then you see this dumbass complaining about sitting in a booth for an hour. It's just really sad. And he gets paid more than any of us. Wow. He, he's probably, he probably gets paid more on a single voice acting gig than, than all the money we're going to get in both our lives combined. <laughs> I'm not even lying. I think that's actually physically proven. That's sad. Yeah. But let's get back to Korra. 
I don't really have that much left to say about the show. I think the animation is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's done nicely. I really like that it uses like these water painting backgrounds and you just have animated characters in them. I think that makes animating a lot easier. If you just make a painting of this one spot and then you just animate the people instead of everything in the show. You there? Hello? Well, Digi's gotten into some technical difficulties now, so I guess I'm going to have to entertain you guys until he comes back. Uh, I don't really know what to say while he's